Hey everyone, this is Jeff Bat with Learning Dojo, and I just wanted to walk you through this template that you've downloaded, or if you haven't downloaded, you could check it out at learningdojo.net slash downloads, and download this XAPI video template. Now this XAPI video template essentially is going to send over XAPI statements automatically for you. So if you come in here, let's go ahead and go to, you do need to have a, a learning record store in order to track this. So I'm going to go to cloud.scorm.com. It is a free learning record store. I use it for testing all the time. But once you've signed up and you've logged in, then you can come over to here where it says XAPI LRS. Now this is going to give you some important information that you're going to need in order to fill out the template. And that information we're going to come back to. But I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to video player. I'm going to go ahead and hit refresh here. Now if you have already visited this template, it will essentially will not pop open a name a place for you to enter in your name and your email. If you have not done that and you basically are visiting that for the first time, it would pop open with a place for you to enter in your name and email. So it's essentially storing cookies on the on the user's computer. It's not tracking anything in XAPI at that point, but it's storing cookies so the user doesn't have to enter in their name and email every single time that they come to this page. And so just a nice way to be able to do that. If you want to disable those cookies, you can too. But I'm I'm going to go ahead and come in to where it says Scorm Cloud. Actually, let's come back to the video player. Just hit play there. It's going to play the video. Now, the, what you have downloaded by default is just kind of a sample video. Just a, you know, they're talking nonsense really, but it's essentially just a video for you to, to have there for you to replace out to, with your own video. But I'm going to come into Scorm Cloud here and I'm going to hit refresh, actually drop down box to the LRS for the sandbox. And then it's going to refresh and it's going to automatically uh, populate the new information. Now today is the 28th of April. So you can see that Smokey McGee, which is my what I entered in essentially with that prompt there, has started the video and then it paused the video at five seconds at well as well. So this is tracking automatically. You don't even have to do anything with the code. It'll track when they start. It'll track when they stop. It'll track when they pause and at what point did they pause. It will also track um, when they've reached halfway. So there's different things that, that are in there. Now if you're uh, familiar with code and you want to go into the JavaScript, you can actually have it track anything that you want. You can add additional stuff. I've pretty much given you the code to go in there and customize this to your heart's content. There are a couple things that you can do in order to change this out. And so uh, I'm going to come in here and uh, just walk you through some of that. So you'll notice in the media folder is uh, basically uh, mp4 one underscore zero six mp4. And that is a video that you can use all as well. But there's this office conversation dot m4v as well as a poster dot png. These are the things that you need to replace. Now we could actually technically just go ahead and delete the one underscore six. We're not using that right now. So the only thing we are using is this office underscore conv dot m4v. And so you would need to create your own video in Camtasia. You would need to create it in After Effects or you know Premiere Pro or something like that and export it as an MP4 or M4V. And then you would need to drag it and drop it inside of here. Now we're going to change the name of that video or you can change the name. I'll show you where you can change that name. But you will also need to take a screenshot of the video. So at some point in the video, you'll need to grab a screenshot of it and you'll need to call that screenshot poster.png. Essentially, the code is looking for an image, a screenshot image when the user first comes to it. You'll notice when I hit refresh, this is actually not the video. This is the poster image that's being shown because as soon as I hit play, that's not the pose that the guy was doing. And so you can grab a poster image of any point of the video and it would uh, all you have to do is name it poster.png and then it will replace it there. Inside of the JavaScript or inside of the JS folder, you have two different JavaScript files. You have images. If you want to swap out the images, like what does the narration text look like? If I click on the narration text, that pops up. So all of these different things are pretty much open for you to go in and customize. Uh, if you are familiar with CSS, you can go in and customize that as well. But really the only thing that you need to customize in order to get this reporting over to your own learning record store is inside of one file, which is the config.js file. If I go into that config.js file and open that up inside of a text editor, in this case I'm using Sublime, you'll notice that it's using JSON. Now if you're not familiar with JSON, it, JSON essentially has a key and a value. So some identifier, which is the key, and then some value, which the value could change to whatever you want. 
Now, the, the point with JSON, though, there's something to remember is you want to make sure that you do not delete the quotes that are in front and in the back of the key and also the colon and then also the quotes on the front and back of the value. Now, no matter if you're typing in a whole sentence, you need to make sure that that quote happens at the very end and the quote happens at the very beginning. Now, if there are multiple lines, you also need to make sure that this comma is there. The comma does not need to be there for the last item inside of there. Um, and so you can see this one has a comma, that one has a comma, but this one does not have a comma. That's just something with JSON is the last item in that section does not actually necessarily need to have a comma. But if I come into player color bar, you can see that this is really just a hex value. I can go in there and I can change the hex value to whatever I want. If I want the enable user prompt, and so if I want them to be prompted to enter in their name, then I want to make sure that that is set to true. And you'll notice true and false do not have an actual quote around it. Uh, that's because it's a Boolean variable and it doesn't actually need to have quotes. The same thing with a, a number, a specific, you know, this has a hashtag in front of it, so I need to have quotes around that. But if it's a number, you don't need to have that as well. All right, so these are different settings that you can adjust on the top here. So enable navigation. If I go ahead and change that to true, come back in here, hit refresh, then I have these previous and next buttons. That way, if you're creating several of these, you can kind of link them together with the next and previous buttons. Now the LRS info, this is what you need to come into the actual learning record store and whether it be SCORM Cloud or something like that, you need to have three different things. You need to have an endpoint. This is basically where the information is going to be sent to. Um, you need to have a key, which is how you how the LRS identifies who the person is, and then a secret, which is basically like a, um, a password almost. But it's not that your actual password to the learning record store. This is uh, generated uh, and encrypted, so somebody basically can't really log in and get any information with this. And uh, if you ever have somebody that does try to send, you know, bogus information, you could actually swap out that key and secret pretty easily. So that is how it is becomes a little bit more secure. So inside of SCORM Cloud, it depends on the LRS of where you get this information, but inside of SCORM Cloud, you go to LRS endpoints, and I am sending over to the sandbox, and so this is the endpoint that I'm using for that. So if you don't change this as all, at all, this is actually sending over XAPI statements to my sandbox, which is fine for testing, but uh, in order for you to view the information, you would need to get your own. Uh, and so that's the first thing. You need to have the endpoint. So the next thing is you need to get the key and the secret. The key and the secret is actually inside of here where it says activity providers. And so activity providers is uh, information that you're wanting. If you want a, a specific type of activity, you want a specific type of to identify, okay, this is uh, the specific course like uh, orientation course. Then you can create an activity provider that's um, for the orientation course. And that way you can identify based on the activity provider provider. But when you create an activity provider right here, it will give you this key and value. So you just copy that key, paste it into there, and then you copy this secret and paste it into there as well. That's pretty much it for there. Once you've done that, it should be sending over XAPI statements to your, no matter where it's at, to your LRS. All right, so the next is the, this next section is the video info. Do not change this video info. Do not change where it says LRS info. If you change anything about that, it might break something. If you delete some of these curly brackets, it might break something as well. So coming into the video title, I could come in here and type in whatever title I want right inside of the quotes. Make sure that you do not erase the quotes. I uh, can't emphasize that enough. If you erase the quotes, it's pretty much going to break your video. Uh, subtitle, if I come back into the video, so if I change the title, it'll show up there. Subtitle shows up there, and I can change it to whatever I want. And then video path, this is where I can change. It's looking inside of the media folder, and this is where I can change the name of the video. So if I you know, create a video called orientation, just going off of that same you know information there, but orientation.mp4, then I just come in here, delete where it says office conversation, and then go ahead and type in orientation.mp4. Now, if I wanted to add video narration, so you can see right here, here's the narration, that pretty much shows up right there. So if I want to change in my own narration, hit uh, refresh over here, hit the narration, you can see that it's updated that text automatically.
So the idea is that I'm trying to keep the, the settings and the text separate from the actual visuals. And that's uh, following the MVC model, if you're familiar with that, which stands for Model View Controller. And so you create your visuals in one area, you create your action in another area, and you create your model, which is your contents, in a different area. And that way it helps to like update your content. You can update it in one location without having to go into all the different locations of where this content may be and publish out everything from there. So really all you need to do is open this config file up in um, JavaScript or in a text editor, change out the text, and then now, once you've done that, you can actually just take this uh, entire, all these files, and upload them to any server, to any website. If you upload it to any website, and then your users navigate to that website, all of a sudden, it's tracking your video. So this template is a work in progress. It is still beta version, so there's still a lot of improvements that will be coming in the future. If you have any feedback, please email me, jeff at learningdojo.net. Go to my website, check out uh, in other tutorials and other also uh, templates that you might, may want to download. But hopefully you like this. Again, let me know if you have any feedback at jeff at learningdojo.net.